The 101, okay, so we're going to start here with some, with some really good tips, really quality tips. The 101, and I love this title because does anybody know what the 101 means out in Los Angeles? Well, it's a highway out in Los Angeles, uh, or as they call them, freeways. And actually, um, the 101, I just like the, that it has this nuance. Anybody from Los Angeles would go, hey, I know the 101. So but the 101, obviously, from an educational standpoint, is that that's the beginner courses in college, right? Okay. Wow, look at this great tip. Follow proper formatting. Okay? So we've all seen what scripts look like, right? We've opened up a, a script occasionally. We've seen that plays look a certain way. We've seen screenplays look a certain way. We've seen single camera comedies look a certain way. We've seen uh, multi-camera comedies look a certain way. We've seen advertising scripts look different, right? Yes, maybe, possibly you've seen that. Every different format, film, television, multi-camera, single camera, advertising, they all have different scripts. If you don't know the proper formatting, you will look like you don't know what you're doing and people won't read your script just because it doesn't look right. Formatting is really important. A, a single camera comedy looks a lot like, or a single camera script in general, which are dramas and some comedies, um, are look, look like a, a motion picture script. Multi-camera comedies are unique in, them, their, in their style because all the action is capitalized. Um, and all the uh, dialogue is double spaced. So one of the things that you'll find is a single camera comedy um, is about 33 pages long, where a multi-camera comedy is gonna be about 47 pages long, 45 to 47. One of the standards in the industry is you say, okay, a screenplay, you average about a minute per, per page. Same with single camera. Where with a multi-camera format, it's uh, going to average about 30 seconds because it's much more dialogue heavy and less description. Does everybody know when I say single camera to multi-camera what I'm talking about? Some nods? Okay, so one of the famous things you hear, uh, well used to, on, on a lot of sitcoms was they would say film before a live audience. So a multi-camera setup is you'll have a stage like a, like a play stage almost and you'll have different sets lined across the stage and they'll have four or five cameras set up to shoot different angles and they just kind of shoot it like a play almost. Where a single camera, as probably you guys experience more if you're in production here, um, you're doing one shot over somebody's shoulder doing this scene, then you're gonna reverse the camera angle, take the camera to the other side, shoot it again, and, and so forth, different setups. All right, number two, see we're almost through 37,000. Never have a misspelled word or major grammatical error on the first page, okay? Sounds pretty simple, pretty straightforward. In LA, in Los Angeles, if you're trying to break in as a writer, you're only one of thousands of people, right? And when you look at how many shows and films are made each year, that's not a lot compared to the number of people trying to break in. Readers and development executives and agents are all looking for reasons to say no. That's how they keep their job, they say no. If they say yes, now they put their neck on the line to actually produce something that could be a failure. But if they say no always, keep saying no, keep saying no, well, then they're less likely to get fired, okay? Bad spelling and poor grammar on the first page. Now, I'm not saying their whole script's gonna have no, no grammatical errors or, or not gonna have a problem with uh, one or two misspelled words, but in today's age with uh, uh, spell check and uh, family and friends who can read through your script and tell you, hey, there's, there's a problem, use that resource. Know how long a sitcom script should be? Now, I told you how long should it be? So 33 for single camera, 45, 47 for a multi-camera, okay? Now, sitcoms are about characters, okay? So if you're creating your own pilot, or, and this is, again, about almost any script you, you, you come, up, come across, you gotta think about your characters first. The characters are what's going to create that depth and that, especially if you're creating a show that you have to write, write multiple episodes continually, Every season, 22 episodes, you run for hundreds of episodes potentially. You need to have characters that are well developed, right? And now they're going to change a little bit over time because you've got to fit them in with 100, 100 stories that are actually interesting. Um, but sitcoms are first about characters. Then sitcoms, comedy writing is about story, okay? You need to know how to craft a good story. But it's always going to come out of the characters first. Sit sitcoms, which sit stands for situation, right? 
Okay? So you're putting your characters in a situation, and it's a situation that pretty much, you know, the average person can relate to, right? It's not just, it's not just uh, a story that's so outlandish like we see on a lot of uh, uh, screenplays, a lot of big movies, action movies. Those are not stories we can all relate to. We don't go through daily life, uh, you know, carrying around big guns and shooting, you know, everywhere and so forth. But in situation comedies, we're set in the family, in the household, we're set in the office, we're set in school, right? It's situations that we can all relate to. And the goal is, is that we're hopefully hitting a broad enough audience with that situation that it draws them in, okay? With comedy, don't try to be too funny. One of the hardest things uh, a young writer especially is, is going to face is that they're always looking to, to get that good joke in there. One of the things the, C the series Friends taught us, and everybody's, pretty much everybody's seen Friends, yeah, sort of, okay. So one of the things it taught us was to, it, it really played upon those sentimental, sweet moments of, of friendship as opposed to really always trying to be that hard-hitting, you know, every turn there was a good hard joke. Um, so one of, the, one of the challenges, don't, don't try to be too funny. Really first focus on getting those characters and stories, and, and the comedy will come if, they, if they're well-developed characters. Okay, be willing to cut your funniest joke. Okay, one of the things is we as writers, we fall in love with something. We go, <laughs> This is the best one, and, and you know, and you show it to your friends, and eh, they're okay. But you know, it's the funniest joke. They just don't get it. Usually, that's the joke that, as they're shooting, they go, "Okay, we got to change that one. That's not funny." <laughs> so, be willing to cut, and then learn to accept criticism. And, and this is one of the hardest things for writers to do, is to is to accept that criticism because you've written something, whether it's a paper for class um, or it's a short story or you know, a 30-page script or a 120-page script, and the first thing you do after you get it done is you go to your mom, dad, best friend, maybe your writing club, whatever you might have, and you hand it over to them. You say, there's my script. I just finished it. And what do we want to hear? Great. Brilliant. You're, you are the best writer I've ever seen. This is a, why are you not out in Hollywood, right? That's what, that's what we want to hear. And, what, what we hear, or what we should hear, and that's why it's not always good to give it to mom or dad, because that's what they're going to tell you. I mean, you're my child, you're brilliant, right? But instead, you've got to hand it to somebody you know is going to say, good try, good effort. I had, a, I had a writer out in L.A., I'd hand him my scripts and he'd go, well, again, it's just my opinion, Jack, but I do get paid for this. You know, he's making hundreds of thousands writing sitcoms, and I'd hand him my script, and he would say, well, this is, you know, you don't want to change this. This joke is too easy. You've got to find a tougher joke. You've got, you got to go a different direction with this. Let's work on the story. What are, you, what are you doing here? You need to have somebody who's willing to really tell you it like it is, okay? Because otherwise, you will never progress in your writing. You will always just kind of plateau where you're at because people will tell you over and over again that, that your inner circle, they'll tell you how great you are. And, of course, we see that out in Hollywood. Every big star has their posse. They're yes men, you know, who stand around and say, you're great, you're great. Oh, yeah, you know, they don't know what they're talking about. It's so hard for them to get that feedback. So learn to accept criticism. As a writer, more than almost any other career, you're going to get a lot of criticism. And you've got to have tough, thick skin, but at the same time be ready to, you know, take that information and really dig down where you're at that point with that hammer, ready to smash that screen, right? Just ready to throw it in and say, forget this, okay? Rewrite. The most important thing, I'll say the most important thing 100 times, by the way. The most important thing is to be able to rewrite, okay? Again, if you get that criticism, are you ready to go back and rewrite it? I wrote a spec script for Malcolm in the Middle, and I turned it in, and I got the call back later that day or the next day, and they went, that's perfect. That is a, that is a great, you did it. It was perfect, Jack. And I'm like, I already knew by that time that there was no such thing as a perfect script, so I knew that wasn't true, okay? So I don't know why they were saying that. But, you know, I had written a pretty good script, but it wasn't perfect. And so I knew that, and I knew I had to be ready for somebody to really tell me the truth, that where it needed to be written or rewritten, get new ideas. And I had the opportunity with that script to have it reviewed by, I think it was Scott Sil Silveri. I think that's his name. But anyway, I think he's the creator of Go On. And he read it, and he pointed out two or three spots in, in the script that didn't really make sense. Like, we, you'll write a script and you'll go, how do I get him out of this problem? Or, or how do I take this leap over to here? Well, he was able to show, you know, here's where you probably should take it this way and this way and then do that with that. And because of that, and because I was able to look and listen, 
I was able to write a much better script, which opened a new door for me to actually get on a, a, a show, which was Wanda at Large. So be ready to rewrite. And then number 10, only use two brads. Okay, do you guys know that? Do you guys know that rule? You ever heard that rule? No? Okay, it's three hole punch paper, right? Why shouldn't I be using three brads, right? Okay, so a script, you know, you, you bind it together and you get these brass brads and you only put it in the top one and the bottom one. That makes sense, right? If you're using one, maybe in the middle or, but, but top and bottom, don't put two, top two, and then leave the bottom open. Two brads. Why would you use only two brads? Well, Hollywood's full of environmentalists. What a waste, right? There's, that's brass brads going, you know, being wasted. No, it, it's just industry standard. It's not any harder to buy. It's a heck of a lot easier. Actually, if you're a production assistant, you're making 80 scripts to deliver. If you had to put an extra brad in 80 scripts, just think how much life you're wasting, okay? You, efficiency time, two brads, okay? You will look like the amateur if you put three brads in there, all right? And nothing screams amateur more than three brads, okay? So as I said, that's the most important thing.